uh, welcome everyone to Parasite. Uh, I'm Celia, one of the curator at Parasite. And uh, for today, uh, we have an artist, like a ceramic artist called Joyce, with us today. So actually for today's section, we have an artist sharing section today regarding uh, Joyce's artistic journey. Because like actually we have like crossed paths um, a few years time before in 2016 in our exhibition after work. And since then, like she has been uh, focusing on her practice and go on to different probably residency and also further develop and uh, further study in an MFA program and really uh, started to uh, focus on her career. And recently she moved back to Hong Kong and like she recently has a showcase at Taekwun as well uh, last year at the Unsung exhibition. So. Without further ado, uh, probably I will pass to Joyce in a short while. But before, sorry, but before I pass it to Joyce, actually, I just want to remind everyone why we are doing this artist section. So actually, this year is our twenty fifth anniversary of Parasite. So we are found in nineteen ninety six. So uh, we have been trying uh, our best to try to uh, foster the co contemporary art movement in Hong Kong. So uh, over the years, we have worked with different artists and collaborators to host different uh, theme of exhibition or program to really have a strong relationship, not just f with the local artists, but with uh, artists overseas as well. So um, we have like cross path with Joyce before and we would really like to touch base again and know more about how her career has developed since our first encounter back in 2016. So w for this uh, sharing session, she will share with us about her journey. So thank you, Joyce, for <laughs> being with us today. And um, would you like to start with just a brief introduction about your background, like where you graduate and how mm -hmm. it has been doing yeah. this um, Yeah. So thanks for inviting me for this talk. And um, thanks for coming, everyone. And yeah, so I was born and raised in Hong Kong. My name is Joyce. Um, shall I transition? Yeah. So I'll start with how I failed. So I was graduated in HKBU. And um, during that day, um, so this is my work from my first course of ceramics. And then I failed really bad. So I got a C plus in my ceramic course. So although I really enjoyed it, and I spent so much time doing some throwing, but you can see my work is super thick and heavy. Yeah, so I got a C plus and I was thinking, oh, maybe this is not for me. Maybe I should just give up and try other mediums. So for BU, um, they offer a variety of different mediums course. So um, I also take like painting, drawing, um, like photography, and um, what else? And yeah, like design courses. Yeah, so um, after this, um, I tried some other things, but before I graduated in my third year of um, college, I um, had an exchange program in Maine. So um, that was in America, Maine College of Art. So it is the art school. And so this place is not an ideal place to go for an exchange. Like, it is like, I had quite a cultural shock there. So the highest building of this place is like six stories high. And then there's almost nothing to do except doing art. So uh, I was the first and only exchange student in this school. And so all I can do is work. And lucky enough, I met uh, a friend, Eva, um, at this school and she's a ceramic major. She's the um, one of the few foreigners um, at this school. She's a Serbian. And now she graduated from RISD for um, ceramics MFA and she's now a professional artist too. Yeah, so she inspired me.
will help her throughout their childhood. Um, yeah, and some of them don't even remember their names. And um, yeah, so I want to explore in this um, topic more and also to pay tributes to these helpers. So I uh, mold casted these cleaning bottles. They are most likely to be disposable. So I want to change these disposable cleaning bottles into something precious and something that um, we have to handle in ca with care. Yeah. And so this is my installation during my undergrad. And I also um, look at some advertising, no, um, some foreign domestic worker agency's website and found these stuff. So they are informations of these helpers with their name, nationality, marital um, status, and a brief introduction of them. And when I was browsing this website, it's kind of like an online shopping experience. And yeah, so I feel like it is kind of this dehumanizing these helpers. So I want to raise them up, um, yeah, to raise awareness of <coughs> this issue. Yeah, so lucky enough, um, in 2016, um, Yi uh, intru introduced me to Parasite and um, have this exhibition for afterward. So I um, improvised my last version into this version, make it more and include more of the s my stories into these objects. So something like this, this is like a spray bottle. And yeah, so when Susan was like vacuuming, she would like also vacuum this doll from my sister and she would talk to the doll. It's like, oh, bad, bad, black dog. <laughs> yeah, and then um, so like this one related to um, a story in the kitchen is like I would tell her oh I got 100 marks for my dictation can you give me a treat and then she'll buy me chips and ask me not to tell my mom and we'll hide the chips yeah I mean like if you look at each like uh, ceramic pieces actually each one really contains of her personal stories or memories in between Susan and Joyce and it's very often sometimes very interesting like you will have laugh or sometimes it's very touching as well you can see the relationship how strong they are like through the years of like being taken care of and being part of the family yeah yeah so during this after work exhibition I also encounter um, other artists so um, so yes yeah, so one of the artists he's from the Philippines and then his mom was working as a domestic helper in Hong Kong and he has like he haven't been with his mom for a super long time and his work is about the emptiness of him having like no mom during his childhood yeah and then I'm like when I was talking to him I feel I feel sorry for him and also I'm like oh did I kind of like rip off some of other people's mom yeah, so it's like a different perspective that I, um, I know of in this exhibition. So mm -hmm. yeah, it is really interesting. And yeah. to be very honest, mm -hmm. Lena, when I actually revisiting like the work now, actually like it is still quite uh, like talk to us in the present time because like still like the population of the domestic worker still is very prominent in Hong Kong that they really helps a lot for many families and yeah. especially during the pandemic time their contribution during the pandemic like how they keep us safe and they're still taking care of all the house whole stuff even like it's a very like challenging time for everyone and they are still very distant with their family who are yeah. suffering under this challenging moment as well so I was wondering were you in touch with Susan like after this. Yeah, so like till now we still talk, we'll like do FaceTime, like time by time. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is a lot of um, Hong Kong kids story. So this is one of the interesting ones. So when I was young, um, I didn't have the ability to wipe my butt after pooping. So I will have to like yell to the kitchen and she will come and help me to finish the work. Yeah, and we have a little turtle on the toilet. So yeah, so um, through the after work exhibition, I I was opened up to a lot more other exhibiting opportunities like 
Yeah, so this afterward exhibition brought to Malaysia and also Indonesia in the past. And also, um, yeah, so one of the curator um, came to visit this show and then also invited me for affordable art fair. And also like later on, like Karen Weaver Gallery and Tycoon. Yeah. And um, so after my undergrad, I to make a living, I was working as a graphic designer in an advertising agency. So it's actually just nearby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, so our company was doing advertisement for like real estate stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're like branding those, um, those apartments, like tiny apartments into some luxurious apartment with like um, clubhouse and swimming pool like that. Yeah, and at the same time, I also have a colleague who was um, living in a subdivided housing. So I visited him once and then I was a bit shocked. And um, I feel like it's quite sarcastic that while we're working on these kind of um, luxurious housing and he's living there. So I want to explore on the housing problem in Hong Kong. So I did a little bit research and also um, went to some site visits and created um, this series of work. It's called Subdivided Housing Collection. Yeah, so I went to some um, oops, site visits. Um, some, so here are some subdivided housings. It is interesting that they will have a doorbell. Um, like they will have a lot of doorbells in one place and which connect to each room. And uh, yeah, also try to draw the mind map, uh, the floor plan out of my memory, and um, do some of the ads for these um, housings. Yeah, so yeah, so I will also go into the um, apartments and imagine how I would place the furnitures inside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, after I, yeah, so I was working as a graphic designer and also at the same time studying a ceramic advanced course at Fisher Art Center. Yeah, so this is my graduation work from that course. And this work has also been brought to Melbourne to showcase in the gallery. Yeah, and um, before I go for my master program, I went for a residency program in Jingdezhen, which is um, by Pottery Workshop. Um, Jingdezhen yeah. is in China, and it's a very, uh, really established and like really uh, popular places for ceramic artists to actually really explore the tradition or even the latest kind of style or like material that like what all the ceramic artists are really uh, looking for or like really studying about because like it is it has such a long history at that place so most of the ceramic artists is like a once in a lifetime experience for everyone <laughs> to go there and I would suggest everyone if if the border is open and you can travel soon in China. If you happen to be like close to this uh, town, I would suggest you to drop by, even if you are not into ceramic. Because like by just looking at what like the artists are doing is already quite uh, like eye opening mm -hmm. experience. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, Jingdezhen have like a one thousand and seven hundred years history of ceramics. And it is the place where porcelain was found. So I visited some of the um, porcelain mining sites, like how they process the clay. And um, me and my friend went there for um, yeah, a short time because I didn't have much time. So we went there for a week. So I prepared some of my bisqueware there and then fire it there and also make some new work there. Yeah, so we, um, yeah, the goal there um, for a week is to learn how to draw Qinhua, which is the blue and white porcelain. So um, yeah, we have lessons there and uh, we do some Qinhua drawing and do a lot of site visits. And yeah, so I made a short video of this place and then we'll talk about it later.
experience um, what is different from my expectation is that um, there's super there's a lot of artisans working in ceramics and how they fire stuff is that they have a lot of public kilns and so the artisans they would make their own work in their studio and then they would send it to the public kiln for firing and um, in our normal practice um, we will make our stuff and then we will bis fire once first and then we'll place it and then fire it again. But in Jinajan, they do once firing. So they will finish their work and then, so for us, we finish our work and then we'll call a shifu and he have the, the trolley thing and they will roll for like two streets across the road and then um, send it to the public kiln. And then there will be a glazeman who's attached with a public kiln. So we'll have to buy our own glaze in those glaze stores and then um, give it to the glaze man and then he will spray paint for us. And then after he finished spraying and then he will give it to the um, firing master. Yeah, and and then like after a day, they fire it into cone 10, which is like um, 1300 Celsius. And then we can all go collect our own stuff. And we paid by like how much shelf space we use. Yeah, so, um, what else? Yeah, so we also visited some, like this one, it's like a super tall vase, and it's like a two-story tall vase, and they need a like two-story high kiln to fire it. And then imagine for porcelain, it's like the shrinkage is 20%, so this shrinks so much. Yeah, and yeah, so after Jin Jen, um, our plan to go for grad school for like one and a half year already, and I was thinking where to go. And so I would want to go to, so I did consider China, but after visited how China, like the China ceramic works, they are more like tradition and um, they focus on the technique of work, but I wouldn't want that. Um, so I wanted to go to some Western countries, but when I consider in Europe, they're more like um, designish, style and they would consider more of the function and how it can be manufactured more. So I want to go for like fine art style and be more like conceptual so I choose America. So um, I was, um, I got accepted from School of Art Institute of Chicago and also California College of Art. By the end I chose Chicago because this school they have there was attached with a uh, 150 years old um, art museum and the professor there, they like know me already. When we did the interview, she's like, oh, your work is about labor and blah, blah, blah. Oh, maybe you can explore certain types of things. So I decided to go there. Yeah, and yeah, so Chicago is also a big city that um, it is 
and very artsy too. So I think it's a good place to go to. And so this is my studio in um, during grad school. And yeah, in at SAIC, um, it is very different from BU. So SAIC is an art school. It is very interdisciplinary. And so for the undergrad, they don't have majors. They will take different kinds of course. And then um, they were like, I am, I focus on certain types of medium. And for me as a grad, um, as grad, we don't take ceramic courses. We only take like seminars where we'll talk about our work and, um, and but we'll TA for some of the ceramic courses. So I was TAing with a um, glaze course while I was um, studying there. And in BU, we will order all the materials like the glaze, the clay, but in SAIC, we have to make our own materials. For example, this is a um, clay room that we get to make our clay from scratch. So we'll have to look for recipes on the books or online. And then we'll have to go to the like uh, ingredients room to get all the resources and then mix our own clay. And then we'll have to test it out and make these clay rulers um, to see how much is the shrinkage of the clay and whether if we like the texture or not. So after we chose a uh, certain type of ingredients and then we'll make a big batch of clay for use. As for glaze, um, there's also not much glaze that is offered by the school, but um, the glaze room has all the ingredients that we can try out. So everyone has to make their own glaze. And so this is the glaze course where we test out the ma raw materials. Oops. Yeah, and so the picture on the right is how we test out the glaze. And we'll look at the texture and then record down which one we like and then we'll add tolerance afterwards. And for the picture on the left is that um, during the glaze course, not just we do did a lot of experiments, um, the teacher will also bring us to the museum next door to look at the pieces. So, um, yeah, so we'll look at the Lee's master masterpiece, talk about the history of glaze, like different types of glaze from different area. Like this one is like a tin glaze, how um, back in the days there's no porcelain and people have to <coughs> try to mimic, oh, there's no porcelain in Europe, but China. And then the Ru European have to mimic the material of porcelain, that's why they make white glaze to pretend to be porcelain. Yeah, so it was really interesting looking at the actual work and um, talk about the history. Yeah, so here are some of my base glaze and then I develop my glaze into like colorings. Yeah, so during my master program, I feel like it's more about um, making good use of the resources and material um, try to experim experiment more while I still have the resources and make something bigger. So at that school, we have so many kilns, they are super big, and I try to make something bigger. So here is the biggest that I've made um, so far by then. So I created this work is about my identity, how I came from, so I'm from here, but I really like nature. So I want to show the nature side of Hong Kong and also how I try to hide my emotions. I think I have like um, blank, blank space, but sometimes the emotions will flow out and also I will hide. So these are like different emotions that I put inside myself too. Yeah, so I also try doing some wood firing um, there's no much um, wood kiln in Hong Kong. There's only two that is functioning. So one is in BU um, that I also took part building it, and then one is in Lao Sao San. And yeah, so what's interesting about wood firing is that we sometimes we don't put glaze on it, but um, the wood ash will naturally turn into natural glaze during firing, and it's very hard to. Yeah, there's no way to expect how it's gonna be like. 
Yeah, so, and there are some like fire marks that can put there as well. So I use this technique to create this work. This work is called Picnic. So um, I got a briefcase. So um, collaborated with Karen Weaver Gallery, um, the curator, he brought us, he bought us some briefcases. So I got this Picnic briefcase. And inside there, there are so many utensils. So for like these blue ones, they are firmers from like more than 20 years ago. And it is made in England or something. Yeah, so I um, so he got these briefcase from an antique store in Shenwan. Yeah, and um, so I imagine this briefcase as a, um, it's like, like a time traveling machine for yeah, you yeah. to go back in the days, right? Mm -hmm. Since it's in the have from some time ago. Yeah, and I imagine it as like a British family brought to Hong Kong since this is a colonial um, city. And um, for me to bring this briefcase to America to fire it in a wood kiln is to record the geography in there. Like I used the wood there to imprint on the function, these wares on um, there. So I um, slip plastic those firmas and those functional wares and put it in a wood kiln to record the location of it. Yeah, and then afterward I brought back to Hong Kong. During my master's degree, I also did a lot of functional wares for selling. And then they sell really good. But my teacher is like, why are you doing this? This is not bringing you to anywhere and asked me to stop doing it. Yeah, so um, I get what she mean, but this is kind of my interest too. So I moved back to con more conceptual work. Um, so before I did this, um, something horrible happened. So I was supposed to have a solo show in a gallery at our school. But a week, a, a week before that, an explosion happened in my kiln, and I got nothing. Wow. Yeah, so I was like broke down. So why is that explosion happened is that something programmed the kiln wrongly. Yeah, so it fired too highly, and then everyone just everything just cracked and exploded. So I have nothing, but um, I have a few cinder blocks at home, uh, in my studio. And I was having a knitting class um, by then. And I, so I make this work, it's called the safe space. So I was referring back to um, the foreign, foreign domestic helper topic um, to create this, like, this work. So a cinder bro block is um, a material to build houses or buildings. And it is very hard and heavy while these knitted um, texture is very soft and fluffy and comforting. So um, I refer them to um, migrants, domestic helpers, because um, they kind of built the foundation of this city. Like without them, no one's gonna take care of, or a lot of families couldn't take care of their kids or um, the chores um, while the adults go to work. And yeah, so they're the foundation of the city and they give comfort to um, the kids or the elderly too. So the contrasting like element of both material also like both represent like their contribution, like, mm. like the, the foundation that you mentioned, how they ac actually be part of the family to give like support and comfort to like, uh, to the child or like, uh, children growing up in the family, but at the same time, the softness, like the comfortness coming from the soft material, really is the relationship that built out of it. Yeah. So it's like a very nice poetic kind of mixture of like two material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was um, so these things are also like stools for people to sit on too, and um, I also made this um, blankie um, out of them to pay tribute to Susan, so uh, she, 
before she leaves, she, the only thing she left is this. It's a blanket, and it has her smell on it. And I cover it every night. It's like she's with me, and also want to return something to her. So I knitted this blanket for her and ship it to her. And yeah, the softness and these little things is like the fun that I have with her. And it's like also、I'm、mending the. Um, scars of my childhood, yeah. And yeah, I try to also explore in different materials.、Um, so this is like a knitted thing, and I dip it into clay and fire it into something hard and strong. So it's just some like material testing, and also、um, to build relationships is between、um, different、um, materials or objects. I was also playing with like concrete or yarns and pom poms, something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, just playing with glaze and also、um, different materials. Yeah. So after I、um, my explosion happened, and then. One of my professors, she said, it's like spring came to my studio. It's like all different now, and I tend to be more abstract.、Um, yeah, so from before everything is、um, very descriptive, and now it's more abstract. And try to put feelings on it, and just play with the material itself. As for this work, it's called Obscurity. It's about、um, how I feel. As a child who be raised,、um, raised by a foreign domestic helper, why I have a quite bad relationship with my parents. Yeah, so、um, I'm like I feel bad for my parents, but I also feel bad for feeling this way. So it's like so weird. So I made this,、um, these sculptures as、I、look at them as little kids. Who has、um, like various personalities that is raised by、um, or don't belong to where they should be, and、uh, yeah, so I also challenge myself to build bigger while I have the opportunity to, and so these are different functional wares to me,、um, or even furnitures. So the big boy at the back here. Um, it is like a ward. It's like a wardrobe, or I can put like cups in there.、Um, and while this thing、um, is a massive stool,、um, and this is also a stool with it's like a piano chair. And for this、um, lamp here, it is、um, with motion sensor. So、um, they're like little kids nagging for attention, and. If there's like no one walk by, then the lights will be turned off. And while people walk around, and then it will turn on, and they can have a close look on them, and they have like little faces on them too. Yeah. So after grad school,、um, I was think I wanted to stay in the states, so maybe to do residency and go on. But at the end, I came back to Hong Kong and. For living now, I work as a teacher, an art teacher, and、uh, at the same time, also,、um, also rent a studio and continue my practice. So during my master program, I walk by the museum every day and I look at a lot of these objects, and there are so many、um, these ceramic objects that interest me, and now I'm like studying the form of them to create、um, new work. And、uh, yeah, so I had this show. It's about、um, it's about COVID. So this TED talk is how、um, they represent for this plants. It's like how we have to care for each other、um, and give love to each other. And like this is also a lamp, and this is like a teleport thing where、um, we have to. Like nowadays, we、um, we have to like comfort make conversations through internet or like phones without like talking to them in person. 
and this thing um, bring us close to each other and um, one person can talk here and the other, other person can listen. So it brings people together. Yeah, so um, coming back to Hong Kong, I have some struggles to market myself. So in the market, in the ceramic art market, I think there's like two sides. One is for fine art, for gallery and conceptual work, and it is more sculptural. And the other side is um, with selling functional wear, like some ceramic stores. And it is a big difference to the audience um, with the price. But for artists, I kind of don't know where I should go. And for me, I'm like, I'm in between, or I am both. And I don't know how to market myself. Yeah, so yet, um, I also um, collaborate with some, there's a plant store where they sell really interesting plants and I will do like ceramic plant pots for them. So yeah, but at the same time, I also do conceptual work and exhibit in galleries or Taekwun and previously. Yeah, so my question is that, so yeah, so here are some of my latest work and I'm still developing it. And my question is that like, how do we sustain as an artist? Like how do we make a living and how to market yourself? Like whether it's for like fine art or, or like it is okay to like sell more art for with more functional wares like a lot of Japanese artists did and what qualities do we have to be a successful artist yeah so that's for my sharing thank you for um having me <laughs> so i think like the reason why like we put up these questions is like something we would like to open up the discussion with like you guys as well but at the same time like i think this has been those questions that always been on like every artist's mind not just like maybe in the ceramic practice but in other medium as well sometimes like is this really difficult to juggle between like what's the functionality maybe what's what what does it mean if we if we have a piece of art pieces in in our living room or in our home like what does it mean to us and at the same time for ceramic maybe the fine line is really thin because at the same time sometimes for the ceramic work like the we really uh, whenever we encounter no matter in the shop or at, at everywhere else like sometimes we ask like what do I do with it? Like, like mm -hmm. how can I use it? Like that kind of question. But at the same time, I feel like in your recent work, you are trying to combine them all together. Like, like for example, even the big pieces that recently you made, like the lamp pieces, or even the, the big like like the furniture pieces that you could put little objects in it. Mm -hmm. It could be a sculpture in itself, but at the same time, it could be a functional work that people can make you make use of it, like during like however they wanted to. So I think like you you balance it, you are trying to balance it in your own way, which yeah. is like really nice. And but I was just wondering like in your kind of in your uh conceptual probably development or somehow like in uh what you have done so far in your work, like maybe some of these topics are very personal to you. Like of course like the main theme somehow evolve around Susan a lot like mm. about your relationship with her about like how how uh, important this uh, population of like domestic worker is in our whole uh, city or even in as a region but at the same time like uh, it feels like you try to also explore your personal kind of uh, identities or like your emotions as well and now you're moving into response to maybe the current situation about the pandemic how people are really responding to it so in your maybe upcoming series that you're making now like are you exploring into other concepts or like what are you trying to explore yeah now? so right now i'm looking at those um ancient functional wear mm. and also looking at um like the trend of immigration mm. yeah so i am exploring this topic and we'll be making some new work mm. And also, like I, I think like, I think we can always like 
uh, try to regard the size of the object like in the past usually we regard the size of the object as like how we regard it as probably like more fine art piece or more functional piece as you just mentioned like sometimes you do some teapot kind of uh, or a plant port sorry for 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 some shop in order mm -hmm. to make a living as well on the other side but at the same time like sometimes we when we look at sculptures or objects of certain size like bigger size we more think of it as an art form yeah. in somehow so are you do you feel it has it matters to you as well like in, in terms of the size, the size. Yeah. and especially since you moved back to hong kong like you like the the <laughs> the 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 resources or like equipment that you used yeah. to be able to access like back in the days when you're at the school or mm. institute of, in chicago like now like uh, do you have that kind of restriction now like how big you can make and how you're going to like maybe juggle around it yeah i think in hong kong like storage space is um is the key it's like so expensive in hong kong and um and also like the size of work also kind of determine whether it's a fine art or um, like functional wear. Um, yeah, so I think like for now I would not think of that how to categorize it, but um, I'm still trying to make some bigger work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is harder in Hong Kong because um, for the clay that we have to buy, it is like imported. Mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, it takes more time to recycle it too. Yeah, but yeah, I'm trying to make some bigger work. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, from the audience so far? No worries. Like, we can like have like chit chat after the talk. So thank you for everyone coming to like share this time with us with Artist Joyce. Like, and thanks Joyce for like sharing with us your artistic journey and like how how you are like trying your best to do keep on doing ceramic after your graduation as well. I think we will like keep in touch and see how it develops. Mm -hmm. And thank you everyone. Thank you.